It does. Oh, Groucho, uh, just before we went on the air, our studio audience selected Mr. Mentor Klein to be on the program. His partner is a very special guest, Dr. Giovanni. I've seen Dr. Giovanni work, and I thought if I invited him down to the show tonight, you could have some fun with him. So, fellas, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx? Say the secret word, and you each get an extra $50.50. It's a common word, something you see every day. Now, what have we here? Two men, eh? How dull. <laughs> <laughs> Mentor Klein. That's me. Yeah, it's uh, Mentor Klein mm -hmm, and right. Dr. Giovanni, eh? Well, which one of you is uh, Mr. Klein? Uh, I'm Mentor Klein. That's Dr. Giovanni. Oh, well, I'm um, pleased to meet you, Doctor. <laughs> How do you do? How do you I've do? had a pain here in the back of my neck for the last three weeks. I wish you'd Well, I'm not that kind of a doctor. <laughs> oh. And uh, are you a doctor, Mr. Klein? No, I'm not a doctor, sir. Where are you from, Mr. Klein? I'm from Chicago. In fact, I'm from the south side. Uh, the south side of the, Chicago? Near the Forestville School. I, didn't you go there? I went to the Wilson Avenue Theater <laughs> on the north side. Huh? Are you for Hirat? Yes, I work for the Pickwick Bookshop in Hollywood. <laughs> oh. I asked you if you were married, and you oh, said you worked for I'm a bookshop. Sorry. I am married. <laughs> I didn't understand your German. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> it's not top grade German. You know? <laughs> you're, you're Dr. Giovanni. I am Dr. Giovanni. <clears throat> what kind of a doctor are you, doctor? I am... Uh, I'm a manipulator. Oh, a manipulator? Yes, sir. Oh, in other words, you're a chiropractor, huh? No, I'm a manipulator. Oh, but what kind of a manipulator are you, Doc? Well, you run a shell game down on Main Street? <laughs> no, I'm picking pockets. I'm the world's greatest pickpocket. Well, that's a pretty strong statement there, Doctor. It happens I come from a long line of pickpockets. <laughs> are you a legal pickpocket, or like the average married woman? Or? Yes, I am a legal pickpocket. <clears throat> Even the police department hires me to show how the pickpocket works. Oh. Well, the I am in a theater and I'm in a nightclub. I ask from the audience people to come up and I relieve them from the pocket book, from suspender and watch whatever they got. I get them. You do this in a nightclub? Yes, sir. In pretty tough spots to operate, isn't it? Well... After the nightclub gets through, then there's not much <laughs> left in their wallets. <laughs> Well, Doc, I'm curious to see you operate. Let's see you take this uh, bookman's wallet. Could you would, do that? Would you like to see it? Yeah, I would love to step see it. Step over here. watching you like a horse. You step uh, over here and watch it very careful. I need Now, some... usually, which pocket do you think the pocketbook's supposed to be in the pocket? Well, they usually have it over here. No, the hand no, side, don't they? no. This pocketbook is in that one, you see? Now, how did but you know that so it's, it's here. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> This is something? You like it? Yeah, I'm crazy. How, how you like this one? Come here. Well. <laughs> I'll never make it out of it, eh? I'll put it away. Don't worry All about right, it. Huh? That this is nothing. Did you have it in that pocket? <laughs> no, I food. had it in this back pocket. Now, yeah. how much you think approximately you had in the pocket? Well, I had... Uh, Did you I felt it? Oh, yeah. Did you felt it? No, no food. I didn't feel it at all. Now, why Ten? didn't why you didn't stop me when you... 110, 130. Oh, you does? <laughs> how about <laughs> this? I wish you would. But don't take the pants off next time. <laughs> you were very swell of me. <clears throat> Put it away, will you? <clears throat> now, you, now you can see why I'm the world's greatest pickpocket. I invented this egg. And I am the father of this act. Doc, you're about <laughs> as shifty a character as anybody we've ever had of. <laughs> that includes Mr. Klein here. Thank you. Now, let's see how successful you are at playing our game here. Mm. This is something else again. Now, this is called Name the Profession. You selected... Let's see if you can correctly name the professions of these famous people. And remember, the more the question is worth, the harder it is. Now, you, we want one answer between you, and uh, you can start from 10, 20, all the way up to 100. Watch yourself, I George. Know. Watch yourself. <laughs> Watch your pants, George. <laughs> you may leave here looking like Muscle Beach. <laughs> All right, what are you going to start with? Thank you. Thank you. 
Ninety. Ninety? You gonna start with ninety? All right, was, uh, what was Booker T. Washington's profession? He was a teacher. Yeah, that's right, that's, that's true. You don't have one hundred ninety dollars. Now, what do you want to try? Eighty. We didn't make oh, eighty. Eighty? 80? <laughs> what was uh, Edvard Grieg's profession? Musician. Musician. Composer, Composer. that's Composer. right. You don't have two hundred seventy dollars. Now what are you going to try? Seventy. Seventy? What was William Allen White's profession? A newspaper editor. Editor and journalist is correct. Huh? You don't have three hundred and forty dollars. Sixty? A hundred? A hundred? A hundred? What, what was Marcel Proust's profession? He was a writer. A novelist writer. and writer is correct and a great one too. Huh? And you wind up with four hundred forty dollars. Thank you very much. Uh, Groucho, we have a housewife for you now. She's Mrs. Uh, Edith Marsh. Her partner is a special guest, General Clarence A. Shoup. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Say the secret word and divide $101. It's a common word, something you see every day. General Shoup and Mrs. Marsh. Hey, General, we're glad to have you aboard. Thank you. Glad to be here, Groucho. Mrs. Marsh, I notice you spell your name uh, E-D-Y-T-H-E. That's Edith. Why is that? What's wrong with the uh, regular, customary way of spelling it? I know of no other way to spell it. I've always spelled it that way, Groucho. Well, I, do they call you Edith or Edith? Mm, they usually call me Edie. Edie? Well, way. at least it's unusual. How old are you, Edie? Oh, a gentleman never asked a lady her age. Now, that's very true. Now, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> Approximately. Well, can we just forget the whole thing? Yes, we can. And I'll call you Edith. Uh, General, you wouldn't mind telling us your age, would you? No, I wouldn't. Forty-seven. Forty-seven. Well, you're a fine-looking lad. <laughs> what is your first name again, uh, General? Clarence. Clarence. Oh, Clarence? General Clarence Shoup. Your middle name wouldn't be Oop, would it? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Oop Shoup. Not quite. It's worse than that. Well, what could be worse than Oop Shoup? Uh, <laughs> come on, Clarence. What's your middle name? Uh, well, maybe I'll... Adelbert. Adelbert, huh? You're right, it's worse than Oop, huh? <laughs> well, don't give up the shoop. We'll keep it up on the uh, No, he has to be an admiral for that. You got a lot of decorations there uh, on your chest. Could you tell us what they are, General? Well, I have the uh, Distinguished Flying Cross, the Air Medal, the Army Commendation, Croix de Guerre, Distinguished Unit Citation, and various theater medals. I'm sure the Marine Corps must be very proud of you. Are you, <laughs> are you living at Camp Pendleton? Yeah. Uh, this happens to be an Air Force uniform I'm wearing, and I live in Beverly Hills. <laughs> you mean there's an Air Force base in Beverly Hills? <laughs> Good place. I always thought all that commotion came from a pack of Cub Scouts who escaped from their den mother. <laughs> are you married, General? Yes, I am. Oh, you've seen a lot of fighting. Huh? <laughs> Any of those medals for matrimony? No, I don't wear those. How did you meet your commanding officer? Well, I met her in uh, Palm Springs. She was down there on a vacation with Alexis Smith, and a friend of mine from Lockheed, Louis Wolfkiller, and I went down for a weekend just before I went overseas, and uh, he introduced us. Oh, Alexis Smith. And uh, is your wife an actress, too? Yes, uh, she's Julie Bishop. Oh. Well, you have a very attractive and talented star for a wife. I've seen her in many pictures. What are your duties these days with the Air Force? I'm commander of the uh, 146 Fighter Interceptor Wing of the California Air National Guard. Oh. What does California need an Air Force for? We have no air out here. <laughs> What do you fly in? Nothing but smog, huh? <laughs> the Air National Guard is a reserve component of the United States Air Force, and we're part of the Air Defense Command. And in that uh, category, we are uh, engaged in a portion of the air defense of Southern California. What are the advantages of joining an outfit like this, General? Well, I think it's a terrific ground show. It's a wonderful opportunity for young men now. They can serve their military obligation and still stay at home. Uh, we do most of our work on weekends or evenings, and these boys can uh, 
maintain their normal living. If they're going to college, they can go out and serve in the Air National Guard and complete their military obligation. It's a terrific opportunity. I gather you recommend this as a good part-time career for young men, don't you? I certainly do, and uh, I can speak from experience. I started out as a private and worked my way up to my present position. Well, can everybody be a general after a while? Well, they all have the equal opportunity. You hear that, man? Join this outfit immediately, and you too can marry a girl like Julie Bishop. <laughs> Well, you're an unusual team, and I wish I could talk at greater length, but the time has come for you to earn some greenbacks. In the race for the $2,500, the first couple won $440, and the secret word is street. General information. Uh, say, that's you, general information, isn't it? <laughs> About 90 dollars $90, huh? All right. According to the Bible, the races of mankind sprang from three brothers, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Who was their father? If you don't know, guess. Well, it was Noah. But if it makes you feel any better, General, I didn't know it either. <laughs> I'll guarantee I didn't. Well, you uh, have half your hundred dollars, you now have fifty dollars. Sixty. Sixty? What are the initials USO stand for? And I want the exact words. United Service Organization? That is right, Edie, that is right. You don't have $110. Hey, she's Ooh, pretty good, huh? I'm getting good. better now. Okay, what are you going to go for? <laughs> okay. she, said, she says try 100. 100, all right. What is the capital of the state of Nevada? Time is wasting. We have to have an answer. We think Tonopah. No. You'll have to fly over Nevada sometime, General. Huh? It's Carson City. You now have $55. That's a tricky question. Everybody says Reno. Everybody is divorced, says Reno. Everybody gets wiped out, says Las Vegas. What are you going to go with? 80? 70? 80? 50, 40? 80, she said. 80. In order to protect a trademark, it must be registered with what United States government office? United States Patent Office. Never a true word has been said. Uh, Patent Office. Uh, you now have $145, and that's your score. Roger, we have a young married couple for you, Mr. and Mrs. Arnie Waldstrom. Folks, would you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Say the secret word and take home an extra $101. It's a common word, something you see, you see every day. Mr. and Mrs. Waldenstrom. And Mr. Waldenstrom, I notice on this card that there are two little dots over your name. What is that for? Is that to confuse the police? In Sweden, you pronounce the name Waldenstrom. Well, where is your home, Mr. Waldenstrom? In Sweden, Stockholm. Oh. Uh, you are Mrs. Waldenstone, Yes, huh? I am. What is your first name? We like to get as informal as quickly as possible here. Aggie. Aggie, eh? Yeah? Yes. Oh. Well, is that a Swedish name, uh, Aggie? No, that, uh, that's a Hungarian name, but when I went to Sweden, that was a Swedish name. Oh, you're Hungarish, huh? I am Hungarian. No, oh. in this case, it's Hungarian name, but here in the States, they have he's, Agnes and Aggie. He's a Svenska and you're a Hungarian? Yes. Oh. Well, where do you live, Aggie? In Hungary or Sweden? No, in San Pedro. <laughs> Well, is that in Sweden or Hungary, huh? No, it's in Los Angeles Harbor. Oh, you live in the harbor, huh? Yeah. I don't know whether I'm getting Hungarian goulash or smorgasbord. <laughs> uh, Arnie, what are you doing in San Pedro? Are you running from the police in Sweden? Oh, no, I'm the head of the Swedish Maritime Division in San Pedro. Well, uh, you're a diplomat? Is yes. That what, what do you do at San Pedro? See that no Norwegian sardines swim into the harbor? <laughs> No, I take care of the Swedish vessels and the Swedish seamen. I issue a uh, seamen's passport for them. Oh, well, how do you take care of the ships? Suppose a Swedish ship uh, sinks in the harbor, what do you do? You swim well, Then we have to uh, hold the maritime declaration. 
And what about the uh, ship that's at the bottom of the harbor by this time? Do you have a meeting to decide what to do about it? No. No. Let them stay at the bottom of the harbor? Yeah. <laughs> Seems to me I'm doing all the talking here. Huh? May I see a few verses? You, well, may yes, I? Yeah, remember, you're a me. wife, and just say yes, a few may I? Yes, Table, trees, sky, money, hand, wall. car, wall. Nothing coming up. <laughs> Didn't I hit it? Didn't I? <laughs> This in Hungary, you know, they say how you make an omelet in Hungary. Hungary, they say, first you steal two eggs. That's the first thing. <laughs> and somebody once said, if you have a Hungarian for a friend, you don't need any enemies. <laughs> and this is living proof of what I've just been talking about. Here's a woman had the effrontery to name eight different secret words and fortunately didn't hit it. <laughs> Don't you have to know a lot of languages to be a diplomat, Ani? How many languages do you know? How about, I don't know, English, German, French, Spanish? Well, uh, do you speak Hungarian along with all the other languages, Ani? No, I just picked up a few words from my wife. When she's angry, you know, then I picked up something. <laughs> <laughs> what are these words? I can't tell them here. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, what do you get mad about, Aggie? Eh, washing dishes. <laughs> Housework. Aggie, uh, most housewives we have on this show have some outside interests like parachute jumping. Or, <laughs> and what is yours? I am an actress. And you're from Hungary? Yes. Zounds, another Gabor sister. Huh? <laughs> what kind of acting are you, uh, are you doing? Stage, movies, or television? No, I am not doing you're nothing. You're just washing dishes? Yes, huh? yes, but I did everything. Stage, pictures, radio. Well, how do you like being an American housewife? What do you think of our electric garbage disposals, automatic dishwashers, and all the American gadgets that oh, we yes. have today? They are great. Uh -huh. They are wonderful. But he wouldn't let me uh, buy those things because, you know, he wants to pay everything with cash. Cash? I like to pay for credit as the American people does. I mean, you buy and then... <laughs> Bonnie, is this true? You want to buy everything up for cash? Not everything, but that's, more or less. That's un-American, Arnie. <laughs> you keep that up and you'll pauperize the entire American economy. <laughs> it's a lucky thing you have diplomatic immunity. You know, you could get thrown in jail for wanting to pay cash. <laughs> After you're here long, you'll realize that in this country, nobody lives within their means. <laughs> Honey, uh, Sweden is a democracy like ours, isn't it? Yes. Uh, but uh, don't you have a king there, too? Yes, sure, yeah. Well, do you have elections? Who's running for king this year? We <laughs> have yeah, a permanent one. You have what? A permanent king. A permanent king? Yeah. You know, 1956 is a big election year in this country. What is your biggest election? Well, we had, uh, we just had an election about uh, driving <coughs> if the people wanted to drive on the left side or on the right side. And that's what the whole election was about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, who was running? Just the automobiles, huh? <laughs> Why don't they just drive on both sides like they do in Los Angeles? <laughs> well, you're a very nice and attractive couple and you're a credit to both countries. Three countries. Thank you. United States, Hungary, and Sweden. Thank you. Thank very you. Much. And I'd like to go on talking to you two, but the time has come for you to win some money, which means play you bet your life. Yes. Please, Mr. Mark. Yes. Give the question slowly. Slowly? If it's possible. Okay, I'll take about 20 minutes with each one. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> I presume you both understand the rules, huh? In the race for the $2,500, the first couple still leads with $440. I'll give you a brief synopsis of some of the most famous movies of all time, and you give me the title of the movie. I presume, I imagine most of these played in Europe. Now, you can start with 10, 20, all the way to 100, and one answer between you. 70. Yeah, the boss. The boss? Yeah. Now it comes out. Yeah. 
only year. 70. Yeah. All right, in 1943, Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman made a picture centering around a cafe in French Morocco. What was the name of this picture? Casablanca. That is right, Casablanca. <laughs> You don't have $170. Now, suppose she'd set some other picture, and then you'd lost the money, see? So we want one answer now. Now, what do you want to go for? 80, 50, 100? Oh, 60. 60? Is that uh, satisfied? That, that's okay. <laughs> well, Ingrid Bergman and Charles Boyer starred in a movie about a man who tried to try, drive his wife insane. What picture was it? No, then. What? <laughs> Just found out definite. <laughs> What's the answer? Come on, take a guess if you don't know. The art of the arm. Huh? What would you say? The art of the arm. No, no, it was gaslight. Yes. Gaslight. gaslight. <laughs> they now have eighty five. You now have eighty five dollars. Now what do you want to go for? Eighty, ninety, sixty? I sixty you have. Fifty. Fifty. Audrey Hepburn and Gregory Peck made a picture about a princess and a newspaper man. What was the name of it? Holiday Roman. Roman well, Roman, Roman Holiday. Uh, Roman Holiday. It's a salad. Uh, now you all have one hundred thirty-five dollars. I had that at a nightclub. <laughs> Holiday Roman. It's very good. <laughs> With Hungarian dressing. Now what are you going to go for? Forty. Forty. Yes. All right. Gloria Swanson made a movie about a silent picture star who fell in love with a young screenwriter. What was the name of this picture? Sunset Boulevard. Sunset Boulevard is right. Don't go any further. You wind up with $175. Thank you. That means that Dr. Giovanni and Mr. Klein, with $440, get the chance at the $2,500 question. Here's the winning couple, Groucho, Dr. Giovanni and Mr. Klein, all set for the $2,500 question. Look out. <laughs> See if you got your wallet. The Harding administration was embarrassed by a scandal involving the unauthorized use of naval oil reserves. It was one of the biggest cases of its kind in our history. For $2,500, what was this scandal called? Talk it over. <laughs> What is the answer you two have decided upon? Teapot Dome. That's absolutely right, Teapot Dome. Yeah. So you win $2,500 plus how much in the quiz, George? $440 in the quiz. That's $2,940. What are you going to do with all that money? <laughs> I'm going to buy a hearing aid. A hearing aid, huh? 